All right, guys, Chatham Cup final. Now, Munyuray, we did win the Northern League pretty comfortably, okay? So we've got to respect them, but if we're being honest, Northern League's pretty rubbish these days, okay? So just don't take it too easy on them, but we should be confident here of picking up another Chatham Cup, even though it's away. Let's pick up another cup, boys, and show them Southern League is a lot better than the Northern League. Party in the streets and the city's on fire. Episode number 151 of the New Zealand Builder Nation here on Sean Does FM with both Cash Me and Goa and the All Whites. I hope you're doing well. And come up today, we've got the Chatham Cup final for 2038. It is a clash between the Northern League champions and the Southern League champions as we travel to take on Manurewa. So if you're looking forward to that as well, there's an update on how we did finish up that Southern League season, some transfers, and also, of course, how the World Cup finished. And do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well it is greatly appreciated but at the end of last week we did take on western suburbs that was in a game in the third round of this competition we're about to play in in the chatham cup so if you missed that one i'll leave a link to it over in the top right corner also recapped a little bit more of what was happening at the World Cup. We'll actually touch on that first before we get stuck in to our form here at Kashmir Tech because there was only a few games left in that World Cup. I think it was the semis as well as the final. In the end, Spain did pick this up. Should have paused a little bit there for some dramatic effect, but Spain, they won the final 1-0 over England. So England indeed did sneak their way into that big dance with Spain, who, as I said, did look like the form team all throughout this tournament did win despite the fact that Lemin Yamal did get injured there in that game in the first half. We've got match stats here. It was actually England slightly on the front foot, but Spain pick up a win based on what we did see for at that tournament. That is probably fair. I think Spain were the form team for at that entire tournament. Going back now to the stages, if I can find it, we'll have to go back here to the past winners and to 2038. There's that group, which of course we topped. I think we saw the results here. From the quarters, we go through to the semi. England 4 1 over Germany. So, beefy, they did find some form there in that semi. Spain did just sneak past Argentina 2 1. The third and fourth place playoff that was won by Argentina 3 1. And you just saw the final. Spain are the champions of the world, kind of like what's happening currently in real life. Spain are going quite well in most things in world football. So, that's what's happened at the end there of that 2038 World Cup. You see, next time around, it will be in Germany. And I dare say, that might be our last tournament of the save. As I said off back of that, not too sure if we'll have time for another World Cup cycle in the save. So I think this is our last cycle here during the course of the save. We'll see whether we just been off Kashmir Tech off the back of the Club World Cup the year before 2042 and 2041. Because really, all we'll be doing is just trying to win another Champions League and then we'll get stuck halfway in the New Zealand season before we do play that final World Cup of the save. And then I'll probably sim forward and see if New Zealand do continue to be a half-decent team. But we've been in Kashmir Tech mode off the back of the end of last week, and we have played quite a few games to finish up the Southern League season and also make our way through the remainder of the Chatham Cup. As you can see, we've got through quite a few games before we're coming back for today's one. A couple of those were friendly. There's a big gap there between late July and mid-August. We'll just get rid of there of those friendlies that we did play. Did play the fourth round of the Chatham Cup. As you saw, that was actually quite a nice tie for us against Palmy North Maris. Could put out a rotated team and pick up a 5-1 win there. And off the back of that, just really continued to dominate the rest of the Southern League. Our closest games there were either side of that break against the Dunedin City Royals as well as Nomads. That one a bit tougher than it should have been to be fair. Nomads a bit of an interesting team. The same as they managed by one of our former players here at Kashmir Tech and Declan Tindall, so maybe he's got a bit of intel that some other teams don't have on us. But apart from those two games, we've been doing things very comfortably and also have made our way through this final the Chatham Cup off the back of an 8-1 quarterfinal win over Christchurch and a few days later, a 3-1 win over Upper Hutt. That's probably the reason we did struggle in that game against Nomads because we did use most of our first choice players in the latter stages of that Chatham Cup. And also, we've got stuck into the start of the National League Championship. Before then, we'll just have a quick look at how things did finish up in each of the sub-leagues. There's the Southern League. Otago Uni 
just got pipped late by Nelson Sabu. So for the second season in a row, Nelson Sabu has joined us in the National League Championship and big gaps back to the rest of the teams in the end. We did beat Parkland United on the final day and that did resign them to relegation. But in the end, we won that very comfortably with a perfect record going up for the Central League as per usual. Western Suburbs did win this one, albeit not too far behind them, only four points, was Napier City Rovers and Havelock North a further one point back. So to be fair, those three teams never really in too much doubt of going through Palmerston North Marist. They just go down Napier Marist, just getting the better of those guys. And going to the Northern League, where of course Auckland City weren't looking too good when we checked on them at the end of last week. In the end, they've finished down the wrong end of the table. They almost got relegated but they were six points clear of Waiheke United and Birkenhead. But Mangarewa are the champions of the Northern League that we are about to take on in this upcoming final. In the end, did it very easily, only losing one game. And rather hilariously, that was, I believe, to Auckland City. doesn't actually come up now, but I'm pretty sure that's who bet them. But they strolled that by 18 points. Manakei United, Bay Olympic, and East Coast Bay is going through. Mount Albert Ponsonby getting done there by the goal differential. Auckland City all the way down in ninth. To be fair, Hamilton Wanderers in 10th. Not too good for those guys either. But that is probably the biggest shock from this season here in New Zealand. Auckland City continue to be pretty poor in the last couple of years of the save. We'll be interested to see if that continues because that is a very poor record. Only four wins in 22 games. And of course, they got knocked out by Minurewa in that third round the same time that we made our way past Western Suburbs. That's what's happening in terms of how teams did qualify for the National League. And going back to the schedule, we've got off to a pretty good start. 4-1 over Manukau, Northern League so weak and whatnot. Then 6-0 over Napier City Rovers. That was quite a good result. And also, 5-2 over Western Suburbs. This game, I was going to be pretty happy taking a draw from it, considering I had to rest some big players before this Chatham Cup final. But still bet them pretty nicely there. Had to come from behind once, but then really turn the screws on them in the second half and picked up a 5-2 win there at my arena. So we'll start off the season there quite well with three wins from three. It does mean we're joint top of a very healthy goal differential in comparison to Bay Olympic, and we're currently the only two teams with perfect records in that National League Championship. Four points back already, the likes of Mangarewa and Havelock North, and to be fair, most other teams aren't too far behind that. But early stages, looking like it might be Kashmir Tech versus Bay Olympic, in the National League final, albeit Bay Olympic, not too sure if they've been anyone too special yet. They might get pegged back once they have to take on the likes of Manurewa and Western Suburbs. That's what's been going on on the field off the back of the end of last week. We'll have a quick look at Manurewa shortly, but before then, we've actually done some transfers. Of course, there's lots of trialists during the course of that episode that we played that game against Western Suburbs, and we did sign a few of them, and also have sold a couple of players here at Kashmir Technicals going over the transfer history, and let's get stuck into this so you can see. Lots of players coming in on a free transfer since around July, and also a couple of departures. First up, we did bring in Prince Kamalo. There was a reason for that, which is over on the right-hand side. Juan Carlos Castro, a big came in for him from South Melbourne for £4,800, and he was actually on a higher wage than what Prince Kamalo wanted, which did seem a little bit weird, because Prince Kamalo a much better striker, so Juan Carlos Castro, who these days, as you can see, does qualify for the All Whites. We've sent him off to South Melbourne, where hopefully he might get a bit more game time there than being the third choice striker here at Kashmir Tech. But those first couple of years we signed him as an under 20 player, he was superb. Some really good goal outputs from him there. And I think off the back of that, we signed Ezra Zoomers, and his game time has gone down a bit since then. But still, he's done very well whenever we did use him here at Kashmir Tech. We'll see if he gets a chance in the All-Whites, if there's some injuries up front, to be fair, quite a strong area in that All-White squad. But Juan Carlos Castro was a great player for us on a free at Kashmir Tech. Now gets his chance to shine in the A-League over there at South Melbourne. And also, we got rid of Louis Evans. Now, this was kind of forced. He was going to leave on a free transfer. We tried to renew his contract. He was on about 1K a week. He wanted about 5K. So in the end, I decided we couldn't afford that, even though by far, our best ball wing midfielder, both in New Zealand and at Kashmir Tech. We had some backups we could use. Of course, Marcus Vincius, a backup term with New Zealand, and also Marco Corona, 
the American. So once he agreed a deal to leave the club at the end of the season to join Oldham Athletic, we just asked them how much they wanted to pay now, and that was £8,000. Louis Evans has left us at Cashmere Technical off the back with 120 appearances, only five goals in league play, but obviously really good player for us, a rock there in defensive midfield alongside Sam Clark, but these days he is over in the EFL League 1 so far, doing a solid job in six starts over there. It did just mean had to promote some players, Marcus Vincius back in the senior team, and Corona in that starting spot. So those are the players that we got rid of from the first team. Also, Pedro Alvarado, as we suggested, he left the club on a free transfer. Prince Camalo came in with that deal, which did get rid of Carlos Castro. As you can see, that wage, actually pretty good for a player who's got a decent record with the All Whites as the third slash fourth choice striker. And also, those are some pretty nice attributes. This is just a little bit worse than Ezra Zuma. So we'll be staying on the bench for us off the back of that time he did spend at Sydney United. But so far, has played six games and got five goals. So definitely a very good backup for us there up front here now at Kashmir Tech. Also brought in some other players. Most of these guys are kind of young players or B-team players. Marco Bruckner, a left winger. Adnan Lamachle, a French centre back come defensive midfielder. And also Agim Tatalaj, he is a 20-year-old striker who's going to be living in the B team. But the other players do have a bit of a first team future. The first of those, Andy Roberts, who's an Australian right back come left back, actually should be the second best right back here at the club, of course. That is one of our current under-20 spots. So this transfer was done more in terms of the future. Once Debenham does become over 20, that might be a position that we have to change in terms of our under-20 balance. He could have been a good backup there to Debenham. Free caps of the Socceroos, formerly at the Wellington Phoenix. So the move did make sense to try and keep him here in the country and hopefully maybe switch allegiances there to the All Whites. Unfortunately, he picked up an injury, though, out for two to three months. He broke his ankle playing for the Turtles. So you won't see him for a fair while here at Kashmir Tech. Not that that would have been the case in the first team anyway with that under-20 stuff that we do have going on, but he's a good pickup there on a free formerly of the Phoenix. And as I said before then, the likes of Shanghai Port and a long spell there at the Wollongong Wolves. And our biggest signing is a new left winger in Jonas Otto. He's still coming back from the injury which he had when he came here on trial a few times. He actually has played a little bit of football for Bayern Munich. So that is a very good transfer on a free for us here at Kashmir Tech. Easily one of the best left wingers we've got here in the country now once he eventually does become a New Zealander. Of course, that won't happen while we're in charge of the All Whites, but he was a bit better than Chris Greenwich. Once he's fit, he should get that left wing spot if we have the room in our squad to fit him in as a extra foreign player. So that's what we've done. Jonas Otto coming in as a star player. Also, Prince Kamalo and Andy Roberts as some squad players going out. Louis Evans and Juan Carlos Castro. And thankfully, as you saw before, our form despite those changes has been pretty good, but we're about to play Manu Rewa in the Chatham Cup final. If you're wondering how we got here, you saw it before. We absolutely decimated teams. But in terms of the semis, Manu Rewa, they just got past Havelock North. Before then, in the quarterfinals, they did a big number there on East Coast Bays. In the fourth round, they got past Tauranga City, albeit that was after extra time, of course. They knocked out Auckland City in the round prior where we got past Western Suburbs. They've done pretty well to make it this far. Have the Northern League champions. It's going to be interesting to see just how good they are here, considering how easy they did find that Northern League. But to be fair, don't know if the Northern League's actually that good in the save these days. Might be the weakest of the three leagues here in New Zealand. And so far, their former National League Championship actually a bit average 3 0 over East Coast Bays in their first game. But off the back of that, have drawn against Nelson Suburbs and have locked North. So they're certainly still in the race to make that final, but not going as well as we are. So hopefully we can pick up a win here, even though this one is away from home, albeit we are dealing with quite a few injuries we have picked up of late. Of course, Jonas Otto and Andy Roberts, you saw those ones before. As I said, Otto, he came in with an injury. He's out for a further five to 10 days with that hip injury. Should be back. Once we come off the back of an international break coming up in tomorrow's episode, but also we've lost Nathan Wilsner with a groin strain. He's out for 11 days to three weeks. That's the backup to Lorenzo Jansen and central attacking the build to the beef here. Probably wouldn't have played too much of a role in this upcoming game anyway, but certainly 
a lot more seriously. David Sifuentes torn wrist ligaments. He actually went off the field in one of our most recent games here at Kashmir Tech. He is out for 11 days to four weeks. We are missing our first choice goalkeeper here currently at Kashmir Tech. It does mean that one of the players that we did sign not that long ago in Mariano Marquez does step in. And to be fair, that's not the worst thing being under 20. That does make things easier if we need to sub players off in other areas like right back and centre back there with Debenham and Hosafa also. Corona, of course, coming in off the back of the sale of Louis Evans. And we do have Ezra Zoomers on a heavy workload as well as Sam Clark. So it does mean that Tristan Turner and Prince Kamalo do come in for this game. So a little bit changed to what would usually be here at Kashmir Tech. But to be fair, all these guys are in some pretty good form in their last couple of games. Hopefully that will carry over into this Chatham Cup final. And we can pick it up yet again as we travel north to take on Manurewa. And here are the team sheets for this Cham Cup final here in 2038. Manurewa are up first being at home. They are going with the 4-3-3 in good form for those last couple of games as you saw in the National League Championship. There we are. Marquez in goal, Tuna DLP and Kamalo up front. The changes to our usual best 11, but hopefully we can continue our good run of form and pick up the cup yet again. And a very early highlight in this game, just three minutes in the corner here in our favour. Looking for someone there near post. Can't quite find the Manurewa. Do clear that one away, but it'd be fair for Rira Sousa there. Our Brazilian left back will get that ball back for us here and try and get us back on the attack. Albeit Anderson went backwards a bit, but eventually we find Corona starts to make his way forward steadily before playing that one up to Debenham there on our right hand So Floats that one far post there. Can't find Greenwood, but Sousa will pick up the ball on the edge of the box and rattles that one across the ground into the bottom left corner. It's a brilliant start up here at War Memorial Park, and we take a nice early 1 0 lead and hopefully a sign of things to come here in this final. Also, might suggest the Northern League teams not too hot in this upcoming National League Championship. We need to finish off, but that is a good early period of pressure, and Sousa caps it off to make it 1 0. And we go forward to the 10 minute mark for the next highlight here of this final. A goal kick there to Mangarewa, but Jansen wins down there. Now Carly a lovely ball forward there to Prince Kamalo. Absolute sitter, but misses the target. Just goes the wrong side there of that right hand upright. So still 1 0, but only a few minutes later, another corner here in our favour. Not cleared away well there by Mangarewa the first time. Eventually they do, but Sousa will find, I think, near Turner. That comes off the woodwork in a good save there from Fogler and goal. So Manurewa we're here under a ton of pressure early. We should already be 2-0 up. Hopefully won't be long before that is the case. Otherwise might find a way to sneak their way back into this game. Let's see if Jansen can get us back on the attack off the back of that corner clearance. Unfortunately, nothing doing. But another corner for us here. Lots of early chances from set piece. Sousa gets the header off, but that one's pretty easily saved from Fogler. So now a chance here for Manurewa to pump this one deep, which they do. Let's see who wins this one here. Car Anderson. Anderson always out jumps the car. Now Greenidge will try and pick out the Kamalo in the midfield. A little bit fortunately, we do actually keep hold of that ball. Now Corona plays that one back to Hosafa. So far, absolute one-way traffic in this game. Let's hope that will continue. Debenham makes his way forward down the right-hand side, puts him to the mixer. Johnson plays that one in there. To Kamalo, back to Greenidge. A first time left foot finish. And finally, we score a cushion goal here in this game. It's been coming for a fair few highlights now, but eventually we get the job done. Kamalo, who missed a big chance around the 10 minute mark, this time does help set up this goal. Debenham put that ball in. It might have even taken a bit of a deflection, but the ball there gets played to Kamalo. And then he finds Greenidge with a first time finish. Wrong foot Spugler. And we're well on top. 2 0 up at the 20 minute mark. And we continue to absolutely pile the pressure here on Manurewa. Another corner here this time, taking it a bit short edge of the box and for Jansen. But Manurewa actually do quite well to cut that one out. But so far this game, complete one-way traffic. Hopefully can make the most of it and actually put these guys to bed nice and early up in the North Island. Now Debenham on the ball yet again here. Down our right-hand side puts the ball here. Looking for far post for Greenidge. But Bugler does come out and claim that one pretty safely. So let's see if this actually ends up being a highlight for the home team for the first time so far in this game. They pump that one deep, but Sousa wins that one, plays it down to Turner, albeit that's a poor back pass car, can make the most of it, big chance, but Marquez, I think, got a touch on that one to put onto the crossbar to still 2-0. Off the back of that, though, there is a goal kick here, and Manurewa do keep that ball down their right-hand side. Let's see if this time they can make that chance count, but that 
bit of a loose touch there and Tuna gets that ball back for us now. Greenidge starts to cut in field. What can he do? Squares that one nicely into central midfield for Hosafra. I say central midfield. He's a centre back, but you know what I mean. Deep inside here, the opposition half. Khaled with a shot, but that one goes quite safely over the crossbar. Still 2-0 Kashmir. And the fast pace action continues here in the first half of this game. Now there's a free kick in our favour. Greenidge gets that one on the edge of the box after it's somewhat dealt with there by the home team. Pull back there for Turner. Bit of a mess there in the box. Kamalo gets a shot off, gets blocked in Greenidge. This is that one back into the mixer, but unfortunately nothing doing so far. But Turner now will pick out there. Carleta, he plays that one across for Kumalo. It's a lovely ball. And Prince Kamalo, the prince is here. He scores his first goal on camera, of course, with a big chance earlier. Kind of made up for it a few minutes later by seeing up that second goal that we did score that one through Chris Greenidge. And this time he puts it away. Carleta, really good pick out there and just buries that one into the bottom left corner. Well on track here for another Chatham Cup with a 3-0 lead. And as has been the case so far in this game, and a few minutes off the back of that previous highlight, and we are now down the other end here for a throw into Munray, where they really need to pull a goal back soon, otherwise in all sorts of trouble. But Greenwich there somehow actually got a foot in there, and now Kamalo off the back of that goal tries to get us back on the counter-attack. Does quite well, there's some good hold-up play, and it goes forward to Turner, and now Carly, he cuts inside, picks out Turner, or at least tries to, rather fortunately, that ball does roll through to Kamalo Greenidge with a poor touch, but now Debenham gets us back on the ball there briefly and actually runs back nicely to win that one over an injured player for Munyarewa. Can he try and set up another goal here for us? Harrison puts that one into the mixer, and apparently a handball by Harris. So that gives us a chance here from the spot, which we really don't need with the scoreline the way it is. Let's see who's on penalties today. It is Waleg Khaled goes just to the left-hand side there of Fagler to be fair. Probably could have actually dove in for that one, but he stayed down the middle. It didn't work, and Carlita, he gets on the score sheet. He's been in some really good form for us since coming back from injury during the course of that recent patch that we have played off camera over the weekend, and already looking very strong here to pick up yet another Chatham Cup as we make it for another few minutes later. Yet another corner here in our favour. I think that might be six I've seen so far in this half, and there might also be some that haven't been shown in highlights, so we're definitely getting chances here from set piece. In this game, Hosafa, he'll find Debenham. That's a lovely ball in there. Fourth Chris Greenidge, who gets himself on a first half hat trick in Manurewa, and not looking much top at all here in this Chatham Cup final. This isn't a very good sign for the Northern League if these guys are the champions and win it by about 17 or 18 points, because we are just going through them like a buzzsaw at the moment. That makes it 5 0 with 10 minutes left in the first half. And in fact, very short back of that fifth goal has been the case for most of this first half of highlight starts. Pretty much right back of that one. And we are trying to make our way here out from the back. Let's see if we can make it 6 0 before half time. That would be very good for us. Could actually be putting up here some sort of record score in a Chatham Cup final. It would actually allow us to rest some players going for our next game in the National League Championship. We find Carly to, he briefly loses out there on the ball. Good tackle. But then, for some reason, the Mangarawa player. Let's that one go out to our left-hand side. We make an interception. They're back on the ball briefly, but Debenham gets us back on the ball. Janssen will find Kamalo looking there for that top left corner, but that one comes off the woodwork, and it's still 5-0 Kashmir. And it looks like that will do it for the first half. An absolute ton of highlights in that game, and to be fair, most of them were in our favour. One good chance there for Manurewa came off the woodwork, and apart from that, we've been all over them. A 5-0 lead, everyone out there playing superbly, so no changes needed already. Looks like this one is as good as over. 5-0 up at half time in the Chatham Cup final. And just over five minutes into the second half, we are back on the attack yet again. Another corner here in our favour. We take it short and goes back out there to Greenwich, who of course is sitting on a hat-trick. Debenham goes back out to him. Now Corona getting pressed a bit here, but now Hosaka, lovely ball over the top there for Greenwich. Tight angle. Will he take on the shot? Yes, he will. It might have taken a deflection off a defender, but Chris Greenidge completes a hat trick here in a Chatham Cup final. And it looks like half time has not done any good for Manurewa. They are still well and truly getting battered here. Uh, the Northern League champions, the shot definitely gets touched there by a defender, staying in the way of the Manurewa goalkeeper. And Greenidge makes it 6 0 nice and early here in the second half. And it might be getting worse because we are still getting. An absolute ton of set piece chances here. We play it one to Carleta. He finds Turner. Edge of the box takes from the shot. That's a wonderful strike. Gets some help from the post, but puts it away. 
it's a rugby score and we're only 55 minutes in to this final. Boy oh boy we're looking good all of a sudden here at Kashmir Tech. We are really starting to score a lot of goals here. Back to old tactic that we were using for a little while but this one same roles as it was but just going a bit more attacking with our mentality and boy is it paying off. 7-0 only 55 minutes in and it might not be stopping a highlight here from the restart to be fair. This one could be in favour of the home team. They've still got their Samang out there on an orange injury, which probably isn't helping. Good chance there for Carr, but again, can't quite hit the target. So Mangaro are, are getting chances to pull a goal back in this game for consolation, but just can't do it. Their striker is struggling a little bit there as the rest of the old car. So we are still 7 0 in front, but the highlights continue from the goal kick. We play it out there eventually by Janssen. Gets us into the opposition half, makes his way forward down that right hand side, takes his time before pulling that one back to the other number. Now, Corona Turner, lovely ball to Johnson, squares it nicely for Wally Khaled, and he'll get himself on a hat trick and 8 0. And we're not even at the R mark. We could seriously hit double figures here in this Chatham Cup final. We are just completely outplaying the Northern League champions 8 0. And the highlights continue. We're not even up to the hour mark yet here, so we are still getting a ton of highlights in this game. Devin and back on the ball from that front inside of the final third. Carly puts that one far post. Looking for Kamalo, but it goes out to Vince. Might actually be a chance here for the home team to hopefully grab a consolation goal. And a lovely ball there, that one does find Vince. He gets in behind, takes on the shot, but a really good save there from Marquez to keep it at 8 0. He wants the clean sheet bonus that's in his contract. He was previously. On a non-contract, I did think with that injury to Sifuentes, probably a good idea to get him on a part-time contract, especially because some clubs did actually come in and try and take him off us. But Marcus has actually been really good in our last couple of games. Saved a penalty early in that Western Suburbs game just before this one in the National League Championship. Now it's time for us here to make some subs. We're going Vinicius or Corona on a yellow heart. And to be fair, Chris Greenidge has got his hat trick. Let's give him a rest here. Dotman de Villiers. Can come on at left wing, 8-0 with 25 minutes left. And the highlights continue in this game. There's been an absolute ton of them, and now there's a goal kick here off the back of those subs that we did make with this 8-0 lead. Can we grab a few more goals, try and make our way into double figures, or will Munyere will score a couple, try and get this to an 8-2 situation? You'd hate to see it. And Jake Harris, you hate to see that if you're a Munyere fan. He's got a second yellow for that challenge there. This could definitely get bad for them now. They've got a man disadvantage in a game. They're losing 8 0. So, to be fair, not too sure how much we're going to be able to tell if the red card's going to make an impact for the rest of this game. But yeah, Manurewa, with one of the worst performances in a Chatham Cup final I think I've ever seen in game, to Hopman de Villiers there lost the ball briefly, edge of the box, but gets that one back from Sousa. We'll take on the shot. I'm pretty sure it's taken a decent deflection, but finds the bottom right corner and straight off the back. Of that red card at the 69 minute mark. It's a nice sight here. 9-0. This is an absolute peddling we are given here to the Northern League champions. Maybe the Northern League should be considered a tier 2 league now in New Zealand. If this is what the champions put up. As we're only one goal away from hitting double figures. And going forward about 5 minutes off back of that ninth goal. And now a corner here in our favour taking short Janssen. We'll put this one far post for Tim Anderson. And there it is. We've hit double figures. And it could still get worse. There's still 17 minutes left here in this final. It's been complete one-way traffic though. Anderson puts that one away and makes it 10-0. And not that it really matters with only 10 minutes left in a 10-0 lead. But we're about to make our last sub here as Tristan Turner does go down to a red heart. Just pausing on the screen briefly. Look at that corner count. 18-1. to That is something I don't think I've ever seen before in a game of FM. We've seriously had so many chances. From set piece, but our final sub here, we're going to bring on, I think, Asana Diop for Tristan Turner because Hosafa can play defensive midfield and Diop can do a job at centre backs. So we'll switch those two around for these last 10 minutes, see if we score any more goals. We probably will against 10 men with a 10 0 lead. And off the back of that final sub, probably the biggest gap we've had between highlights so far in this game now, up to the 87 minute mark for the next one. It's actually Manurewa on the attack to beef here. I said it was complete one way traffic. They have had their chances but have taken them poorly. There's another example that one Marquez makes a pretty good save from the beef here. He's doing a good job there in place of Sifuentes as explained earlier. And now that might be our 19th corner as we try and square that one nicely there for Kamala. Was facing back to goal 
find Seuss who to be fair took an absolute age there to realize that ball was being played for him looking there for Carleta inside the box and that's what aerial ping pong there the ball nearly falls to Camalo as we look for 11 0 that actually might have been for his hat trick but in the end that highlight not up too much at all but that is an absolute pasting in the Chatham Cup final here in 2038. We haven't really introduced too many of those players that we brought in from that recent batch of signings. No players like Otto who will only make this team even stronger. And losing Louis Evans actually should make us weaker in midfield. But still, that was a very dominant display. Obviously, Manurewa not helped by the red card. But they were already 8-0 down at that stage. So to be fair, they might have actually played better once they lost the guy. But that is absolute decimation there. We give the Northern League champions a good old paddling, a 10-0 win in the Chatham Cup final. So an absolute demolition job there in the one game we're going to show you guys in today's episode. To be fair, I thought it would be a lot closer than that, but Manurewa, not up too much at all based on that performance. We smashed them 10-0 in the Chatham Cup final and pick it up yet again. Let's just see how many years in a row now that might make it. Going back here to pass winners, we've won it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven times in a row and 10 times in the last 11 years since we have come to the club. That is some record in that one. Probably our easiest one so far in a final. Of course, get some nice money for that. Very useful indeed. Just a quick look at what that does for the club finances. Not bad at all now. Only £63,000 in the red. Hopefully, if we can pick up the National League Championship off the back of this, that will top those up quite nicely and gas an actual positive going in to the end of the season. We have lost a bit of money off the back of the Club World Cup last year. A bit disappointing, but still making a bit of a profit in terms of the overall season. So we're definitely getting a bit better in terms of our finances now here at Cashmere Tech. Not too sure if we ever go back to being professional, but certainly going in the right direction off the back of how bad things were looking a couple of seasons ago. But that will do it for today's episode, especially considering that game took a fair while with all those highlights and all those goals. If you enjoyed it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video. And if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated now. We've got an international break coming up before the rest of our games in the National League Championship. And based on what we've just seen, we should be winning those quite comfortably. So I think we can maybe even skip forward until the final of this competition in a couple of days' time. But before then, we've got an international window, our first one since the World Cup with the All Whites. And we're going to start doing some pretty big teams now. We are up inside of the top 20 for the rest of the save. And as you can see, that kicks off with these next two games that we are playing in New Zealand. We start off with the soccer ashes. We take on Australia. They, of course, did make their way into the quarterfinals of that previous World Cup. They're just above us on the world rankings. But, of course, we still hold the soccer ashes. This is their chance for them to try and take those off us. So we'll play Australia in the first international friendly in tomorrow's episode. And then we take on the team that finished third at the World Cup in Argentina. Of course, these days, no Messi but they'll still have some really good players. That could be quite tough for us, but hopefully might find a way to keep that one close, but definitely want to beat Australia, and hopefully that might help us sneak above those guys on those world rankings. So we'll come back tomorrow with two big friendlies against the A's in Australia and Argentina with the All Whites. So until then, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on, and I'll see you then. Cheers.